The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Hey everybody, this is The Ash Holes. Each week, they smoke a different cigar, sometimes the same cigar, but mostly different, and they give their honest impression. They always assign an official Ash Holes rating to that cigar. So, pull up a chair, light up, relax, be an Ash Hole too. It's very rewarding. Broadcasting live from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Sam New Hampshire. This is the Ash Holes Podcast. And today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of cigar bars. Compared so, to c- cigar stores. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So the convicts of c- cigar bars. This will be interesting to me. Yeah. I once hosted um, a cigar bar thing, and I was the moderator, uh-huh. too. They had cigar bars, and I found it interesting because I've chosen to be a cigar store yep. all this time, and we we can get liquor license anytime we want here in mm-hmm. New Hampshire uh, for a cigar bar, and I chose not to, to until recently, and that recent thing that happened is they demand that I have a liquor license in order to have smoking in the store. Interesting. So one of our stores has a liquor license operating right now, which is the Nashua location, and the other two remaining, which is Salem and Seabrook, probably in the next week or two are going to have liquor license there. Hmm. Whether I choose to serve liquor or not will be determined right. today, Right. I would say, <laughs> by, you by uh, what you do. We are the Ashholes. My name is Dave, and you heard from Aaron. I have um, Ed Sullivan beside me being yeah, quiet. I'm quiet today. Quiet today. <laughs> and uh, that's Dan and Chrissy on the board pressing Hiya. the buttons. So... Uh, what are we going to have here to light up? We need something to smoke. Well, we got something today. We have the Avo XO Legato. This is a cigar made in the Dominican Republic with a size of 6 by 54 It is an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper with Dominican binder and filler. The price is thirteen twenty nine for a single, or you can buy a box for two thirty five ninety nine, which is a savings of twenty nine eighty one off the single price. And you can find the cigar on two guys cigars.com. That is the number two guys cigars.com. Do they pretend it's a Toro even though it's so fat? This is like mm. fifty four. That's like the standard Toro for the big four. Yeah, right. This was the Monte Cristo <laughs> Monte Cristo uh, White Series Toro. It was uh, a six by fifty four. For a while everybody was doing fifty twos yep. and I wasn't even happy with that. Nope. Mm. It started off at a six, six, six by fifty. So yeah, I know. next year we can look forward to the fifty five or fifty six. Yeah. Right. What's, what's oh. funny though is the Churchill in this size is a true. It's a seven by fifty. It's not a okay. fatter Toro. Well, or, that's not even a true Churchill. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Churchill is a forty nine. Uh, forty seven for forty seven. Kind of yeah. Odd, yeah. Um, so what is the difference between an Avo and an Avo EXO? Yeah, EXO is the brand name. So, like, they have the Avo Heritage, the Avo Classic. Yep. So, because the Avo, regular Avo cigar is an Ecuadorian wrapper, Dominican filler and binder. Mm-hmm. This is an Ecuadorian wrapper, Dominican filler and binder. It's mm-hmm. the same. It says the same thing on it. Yeah. So, I wonder what the difference is. I'm not sure. I mean, to be I know honest. it looks more brown than gold. You think so? I think this is lighter than the really? Classic. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Let's give uh, it a light. Yeah. Well, the cold draw. Is, yeah. I mean, just graham crackers. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing wild. Yeah. All right. Clean, it, clean and aged. It's time to light our cigars. Brought to you by Perdomo, the hottest brand in the land. A company founded on quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. One draw. That's the law. 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 It's brought to you by Abuelo Cigars. You're going to live under my roof. You're going to play by my rules. Abuelo Cigars. So, Dave, what are you saying? That it's unexpected to have the exact nice. same wrapper, filler, and binder? It would be unexpected. All right. It would be unexpected. Mm. Those that know, know. Yep. <laughs> What's funny about this cigar, you're saying, uh, weren't sure if it was lighter or darker. What I find with the XO is, obviously, Avo is made by Davidoff. I feel like the Avo XO is the closest thing to a Davidoff in terms of, like, could you graduate up to that next level of pricing um, flavor-wise. So I'm looking at Chrissy because, did you, did you go down? Did I go down? Did you go down? Did the system go down? Nothing? No. Oh, all right, because it completely, I happen to have the YouTube feed 
on and it just went down on me. Oh. Hmm. So I don't know. I don't know if we're on. I don't know if. I mean, we I'm are. still getting messages from everybody. I'm so, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I can see you looking. I'm like, why are you looking at me like yeah, that? I didn't I do just, anything. It, it just went. It Maybe went, went off. The countdown and, uh, to the action. Yeah, yeah, I got nothing. Hmm. I got nothing. I got it up. But oh. we're yeah. Yep. Okay. Sorry. We're we're op- we're operating. I, I'm not. I'm still not. <laughs> so. well, everything on my end. All right. Good? So it doesn't work. Yeah, Don't worry maybe, about me. Maybe hmm. the Chinese people took over they your have, phone. They oh, have. No. I'm back. I'm back. But maybe, uh, maybe you need to put your password a password in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're having computer problems. Oh, boy. The, whatever I do, it's. I'm not good with these things. Um, certainly not. But it it is what it is. Pros and cons of cigar bars for consumers and owners. I would say for the owner, so let me take that as a uh, owner of, of, of a shop, a um, lot of negative stuff, I'll say, when it comes to turning your store from a cigar store to a cigar bar. One of the first is going to be you have lots of liability, mm-hmm. right? So what you own every person that walks in. Right. Somebody comes in and buys a box of cigars and goes away, no, no big deal. Yep. Um, they come in and, and they... Drink a uh, a case of beer or something, you got some problems, right? No. Correct. Did you have to take on extra insurance when you yes. started? Sa- yeah. Well, I guess I didn't have to. No, but yeah, there's more liability. How much do so you have you- to lose, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, it's it's a it's a lot of money for insurance on top of it, um, and uh, certainly you don't even want want those problems in in your life to be around yeah. you in life. But also what comes with it on the positive side is the revenue. Right. And there's a lot of margin on alcohol, way, yes. way more than there is in selling a cigar. Right. And the fear I have is that I'm a business person. You see the X amount of dollars coming in from the liquor and the margins, which is so much better. And then the amount that comes in on cigars and the margins are so much lower. And the next thing you know, you start looking at the alcohol and you care about the alcohol sales and somebody comes in and they brought their own cigar and you don't even care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I see ends up happening. And I do care when people come mm-hmm. in and don't yep. smoke cigars in the store. And I'll tell you as a, as a listener, don't go in somebody's cigar store and bring your own cigars. It's, it's yeah. wrong. Don't go into a restaurant, bring your own sandwich. Don't go into a bar, bring your own booze. But, you know, oh, I think it's okay with cigars. It's not because no. that's all I do for a no. living. And I will do. say it. You should follow the rules of the establishment, right? Mm -hmm. If a cigar bar tells you, you know, we have a cutting fee, then I think they're saying you have permission to bring your own cigar and pay the cutting fee. Yeah, and that's I don't know why you would do that. Uh, It's well, if you're in the business of selling cigars. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's kind of. I mean, that's kind of even a different. You could do a whole show on that of like Mm -hmm. the cigar bars. A lot of them are people who are from the bar business who are opening like a specialty bar under their umbrella of different establishments they have. And I think that they just are so unfamiliar of how it should work. They just do that instead of doing the right thing because they don't really sure. And a lot of times, and it's one of the cons I have for consumers on my list, is a lot of times the selection at a lot of cigar bars is so minuscule compared to a retail store yeah. that instead of when they open, they're like, oh, we have everything people want. And then every single person is like, well, I want this. I want that. Yeah. It's like, well, fine. $10 cutting fee. Right. And then I don't have to deal with it. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've <clears throat> been to cigar bars before and you look at their limited menu and there's nothing I even mm-hmm. want to smoke that mm-hmm. they're selling. All right. So let's say it's a bar and they serve food. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's a limited menu of food. That right. you went in there and they have bar food, basically. Uh, you can get burgers, you can get fries or something. You say, I want spaghetti and meatballs. So I'm going to bring my spaghetti and meatballs right. to If this. they offered a, a plating fee, for yeah, example. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's it, it, only ha- it only happens in cigars. Mm-hmm. But it, it certainly doesn't make sense. But it is a well, thing. I mean, there sometimes there are, you know, corking Yeah, fees, corking fee for but, wine. Yeah. You yeah. know. But yes, yeah, you, listen. You're gonna bring your thousand dollar bottle of wine because it's mm-hmm. a, a birthday, and you wanted to yeah. make a thing. I I, I actually get it at yeah. that point of it. But when it comes yeah. to you, you're going to a cigar bar. I think the cigar in the bar word says no. You right. don't, you don't bring your own BYOB yeah. BYOC. 
Um, so that that's my gripe when it comes to, For sure. to that. Now, um, as far as you've ran cigar bars yeah. yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the ultimate pitfall is something that you were talking about where they, uh, a lot of places get enticed with the margin on the alcohol versus understanding that they're a cigar bar. Because the reality is, is if you're worried about selling alcohol, stop selling cigars or even having people yeah, smoke because you're, alienate, yeah. you're alienating over 90% of the population yeah. who's going to walk in the door. So that is one of the cons of owning a cigar bar is if you're in the business of selling a lot of alcohol, you still will sell a lot, but you're not going to sell as much as you could if you didn't allow smoking. Right. Right. Um, and there's kind of different ways to look at it. So, did, did you allow cigarette smoking? No. Did you allow pipe smoking? Uh, no. No. No, we didn't sell it. We didn't sell it, but no. Yeah, okay. No, you couldn't vape. Uh, no cigarettes, uh, cigars. just cigars, yeah. just cigars. Um, so like, yeah, like you said, a lot of the pros, the high margin on alcohol. So it gives you n- another revenue stream that you wouldn't have had if you were just selling sure. cigars. Um, like New York now, they, they're allowing it, right? Did that go uh, through? No. Oh, it's almost no. there? Yeah, it's I mean, still it, on it the... might save them, and, and, and I want yeah. that for them. If, It'll if they... slow the bleeding, I think, yeah. you know, but it's a good thing for them to have the option, right? Um, and that's the other thing. You have more options to sell, not just selling alcohol. You can sell whatever. You can sell different merchandise. You could sell glassware and all, get yeah. all the, the tchotchke stuff. Yeah. You're going to probably have a higher markup on cigars because normally at a cigar bar, the, the markup on the cigar is a little bit higher because, again, you might have a smaller selection. So maybe depending well, well, on where you are. Why is that okay? Why is – Because normally a cigar bar is not going to be in – most of them aren't in a suburban area. Like a lot of the bigger ones are in main cities, tourist vacations. Like you're not going to. And, and if it was a cigar store, it, it would have to be at the right price. Of course. It's just, uh, see, there's I, no logic behind no, no, some of the. You know okay. what I mean? But it's the it's the reality. Of, it is reality, right? Yes. Um, and I and I hear people say it. Well, you know, it's a cigar bar. I expect to pay more. Yeah. Why? Why mm. would you expect yeah. to pay more? Because they make so much money on the alcohol. Now they should make yeah, all that much money on the. <laughs> right. That's not fair. But yeah. Okay. And it's you know uh, you can. There's a lot of a lot of the pros and cons counterbalance. It's like yeah, you're open different hours than mm. uh, a lot of the cigar retail stores. So you get a lot of people that maybe can't make it to a cigar store during the day, so they're going to come at night and maybe buy product. But also, that means you might be open from noon till 1 a.m. or 2, 2 a.m. where you are. And, like, I certainly <laughs> don't want to do be anywhere working at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. Um, you know, you can sell alcohol, but you have more opportunity for theft because people will overpour, underpour. And you're talking about two shifts. Yeah. Back, back to taking the – put the retailer's hat mm-hmm. on – that I can't expect one of my employees to work from uh, noon, let's say noon, till 1 o'clock in the morning. Or in right. my case, we open at 10 a.m. Yeah, 10 a.m. Working to, doubles. Yeah, to double shift every single day or whatever. Yep. Employees are a problem to begin with anyway. Right. So you're talking two shifts. And is your cigar expert also your bartender? Mm. So they're not good at one of the things. Don't tell me right. they're a great bartender <laughs> and a cigar expert. Right. Show me that person. Exactly. You know? and, that, and that's another tough part, too, of being an owner is the turnover rate is a lot higher. because Especially uh, I went through this where the cigar bars I ran were in big vacation areas. So a good bartender wasn't going to come work for me. They'd go work at insert name of beach bar. Right. They'll make five to $1,000 a night in wow. tips in a cigar bar. They're not going to make as much no. because they don't have as many people coming through the door, sure. even if you're busy. Um, and the, the automatic slowdown of drinking mm-hmm. is the cigar itself. Right. Doesn't that slow down the process of drinking? You don't drink slower, too? Well, as opposed to depends go, on what they're drinking, Go to the I bar guess, and right? pound, pound a bunch of drinks and shots. Yeah, that's... Not- yeah, that's the one positive I think. If, if from an owner standpoint, is like most people, really people don't get drunk at right. cigar places. Well, it can say happen. positive or negative. Negative on it is they they're drinking far less and drinking a lot yeah. slower. Yeah, you know, you get a cigar and it's going to last you an hour. Maybe you have two drinks. You go in there, pounding drinks, and maybe yeah. you had four but, drinks. But you're also selling more higher end spirits. Right, mm. so like you know, if you're going to a sports bar, you're probably not having a lot of people drink Johnny Walker Blue mm. or some high end bourbon. Well, so let me ask you: Is that the case? What is the biggest selling item at the cigar bar? Is it a Johnny Walker Blue or is it a? Oh no, no, it's still Bud Light and Tito's. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. yeah, you still have that. But yeah. you know, if you look at the you know the portfolio of what you're selling constantly, I'm sure mm. you're going to see a lot more Lagavulin or Blanton's insert. You yeah. know, fifteen to twenty dollar a pour drink that you would have saw at an Applebee's or another <laughs> bar, you know what I mean, um, comparatively. 
So you you might sell less in volume, but you might sell more in dollars. How about people celebrating that um, it's somebody's birthday or something? They go into yep. a cigar bar so I can have a cigar and we'll mm-hmm. have some drinks and mm-hmm. – yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Lots I'm, more celebration is happening at the cigar uh, bar. I don't know if I saw a lot more celebration. Yeah. Certainly not a lot of family celebrations, but right. I, you saw a lot more, uh, depending on your ventilation, you saw a lot of date nights. You saw okay. a lot of uh, more more female clientele still, than still brick and mortar. business people who yeah. might go there after dinner. Yep, or happy hour mm-hmm. Okay, so, so it was a guy in the dating scene, which me and Ed have long gone out yep. of that. Um, would you take a date to a cigar bar? I mean... Yeah, it's, I, a, it's a good test. If you're in the business, I mean, yeah, but like if if it was just like a first date, I wouldn't bring someone to a cigar bar. No, no. no. Then you, you you talk about it and you say, oh, I like cigars too. To you, no, I don't like yeah. cigar. I never had a cigar so, or something. Yeah. Oh, so but. you hold off until you need to decide if the person is a keeper or not. Yes. Right. And then you the take litmus them and test, see. right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I married somebody that never had a cigar, and here I am. Uh, oh my God, over thirty years now. Mm. And she still never had a cigar. <laughs> yep. Really? No. Never. Nothing. Wow. Your wife had a cigar? No. How many years? 27. All right. So what am I, <laughs> crazy here? 27, 30? Oh, yeah. my God. You're, you're in the business. Though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. She's she been in the cigar store. She never complains about my cigar smoking, yep. but she met a cigar smoker. Yeah. That's who she met. Yeah. Right. So that's the key. Yeah. Yep. It's harder if you take it up that's afterwards. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very interesting. Uh, let's get to more of that uh, in a little while, but let's take a break and we come back. More of this and more of the Ashholes. Only Great Leaf makes great cigars. Aganor Salive stands out because of the distinctive mouthwatering flavors of the Corojo 99 and the Criollo 98 seeds cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands in Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of the JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of the Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you will experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganor Salif different than any other tobacco in the world. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganor Salif. Hello, cigar aficionados. This is Klaus Kellner from Davros Cigars. I invite you to taste the elements with Davidoff Escurio, Nicaragua, and Yamasa. From water comes originality. Savor the sweet and spicy originality of the Davidoff Escurio tobaccos born by the rains of Bahia, Brazil. From fire comes intensity. Enjoy the bittersweet aromas and fiery intensity of the Davidoff Nicaragua. From earth comes complexity. Taste the earthy flavors and complex spices that are unique to the red soil of the Yamasa region in Dominican Republic. Only Davidoff Master Blenders could take the power of nature and blend it into a range of exceptional cigars. Each element making each cigar a unique experience. Water, fire, earth. Flavors that have risen from the very world itself. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Davidoff Cigars. Cigar adventures to a wider world. Looking for a mild cigar? Don Rafael is just that. Solidly constructed, and it offers up a mellow experience that holds a ton of universal appeal. This is just one of the reasons for Don Rafael's enormous success. Looking to get your friend into smoking cigars? The Don Rafael cigar is absolutely the right choice. The brand originally set out to outdo the competition, but for the price, there is no competition. You can't beat Don Rafael. It outsells them all. Don Rafael can be enjoyed any time of the day, all day, and cigar after cigar. The Don Rafael has a smooth, mellow aroma that will not linger. Draped in a seamless golden brown Connecticut wrapper, Dominican long fillers, and a Dominican binder complete the blend. Expect earthy notes with some hints of cedar throughout. And as far as quality everyday blends go, for a mild cigar smoker, it doesn't get more satisfying than this. Remember this, Don. Don Rafael. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, 
and other times, subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room Cuatro Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning cigar smoking can cause cancers of the mouth and throat even if you do not inhale. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head, and value, value, value. There are Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian, and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five year old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well aged long filler leaves. So, what you do expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional, a flavorful journey into sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original unconventional cigar. Take a journey. And we're back live in the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio above Two Guys Smoke Shop in San Hampshire. We're smoking the Avo XO Legato. And if you want to send us an email, it's theashholdpodcast at gmail.com. And I say that because we didn't get any emails this we week. We didn't get any <laughs> emails. Or gifts. But they're on the chat box here. And we have... Uh, uh, issue with cigar bars have been that they are not connected to the cigar shop, so they're limited selections in the bar, uh, and they make money on food and drink. Um, and they never expect us to buy cigars there, money from alcohol and food. They never expect you to buy cigars. That individual store, right? Because yeah. I'll tell you, if you come to my store, I expect yeah. you to buy cigars. Uh, B. Alexander, too, says, um, I like the mini bar with the little bottles. I don't <laughs> drink large quantities. I like it. Well, I have the perfect place. <laughs> Good news. Because <laughs> that's what we do at the Nashua, uh, Nashua store. And um, just like the... the um, airplane. Yeah. On the airplane, we have one of those carts. And we bring the cart over to you. And you say, I'll have uh, vodka and tonic. And here's the little vodka. Yeah. And here's the tonic in here. Well, we need a... Whatever, we got um, a little of everything, yep. but um, it is not what we're concentrating on. That's the idea of it, that yes, right. we have something to enhance your cigar yeah. with, but not here is the cigar is not enhancing your drinking. Yeah, it's the, that's like the ultimate example of a cigar store that has alcohol. Or that serves alcohol versus a, a bar that happens to have cigars. Right. It's the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, look, there is places that are run well that are bar set, bar first. Like, it's it. Do I think that that's how I would want to do it? No, but can it work? Yes. Should it be that way? Probably not. Yeah. But you know, um, listen, they're following the money. Uh, yeah. Yes. Or they like hanging out at the bar anyway. Yeah. You know, or whatever. Uh, a lot of retailers are, uh, you know, hobbyists anyway, and yeah. They, they want to own a bar or they want to open a, you know. <laughs> and now they got both. A, yeah. They have both, right? So good for them if they end up happy. I just would never go in a restaurant and bring a sandwich. I would never go to a oh, cigar no. bar and bring my own cigar. Who has more cigars than me? I have the most cigars than anybody. And I have cigars on me and I have cigars in the car and the cigars everywhere. But I go into somebody's cigar shop Absolutely. and I buy a cigar because yep. that's what you do. And if I went to somebody's bar, I'd buy a drink. And I'm not even a drinker, but I would do it because right. I'm at their bar. So, yep. so I don't know. I just think it's the, the way to go. Um, what else? You said uh, somebody had a question here, Chrissy, on a humidor or something? Yeah, it was uh, – I I suppose uh, I, I pose an ash hole question. What is wrong with using large coolers if you have a large collection of cigars? I think in either this show or the other show, you guys seem to dislike them. I have so many cigars that I have two large coolers. I use wooden cigar boxes and trays to help keep humidity, and I keep the coolers in the basement, and I use a desktop humidor for upstairs. That's yeah. all right. I like using coolers. The yeah. As long as they have a, like a Yeti cooler that has the really tight seal, you know, Throw a pad. You're not going to age anything in them, right. but they'll stay humidified. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're not worried about aging, I think they're great. And it's a cheaper way than getting an mm -hmm. electric tower. You do right. Want every, every now and then, though, you do need to open it up exactly. and get yeah. some yeah. air exchange. What would, what would you think if you went in your favorite cigar shop <laughs> and he had a bunch <laughs> of Igloo coolers? Yeah. And he, you said, oh, I have a box of this, and let me get some cigars. And he pulled it out of there. You go, what the hell are you doing, right? Yeah. You, you'd say, this guy isn't keeping his cigars proper yep. for aging right. uh, and improving. So it's not going to improve, but it's a... Sustained. Listen, you gotta, yeah. It's, it's it works. Sustained, it works. Uh, listen, a mason jar, a... Uh, a Tesla. 
Tesla. <laughs> Tesla. Yeah. That's expensive, though. Yes. 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 <laughs> it is. Um, so we are smoking the Avo XO, different from the regular Avo. This is the uh, little higher up. We're still we're in the teens here. Yeah, we're in thirteen dollar cigar. How's it going for you so far? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Clean, mild. Yeah. It's I, like I said. This is to me. It's the the graduation cigar to Davidoff. So if you're looking, mm. if you like this profile, the next step would to go to Davidoff from here because mm-hmm. there, it's going to be a more refined. This is like an unrefined Davidoff. Yeah. This is, uh, I, I would say if I connected it to something, if you like something like the uh, Diamond Crown, uh, this, this would be up there mm-hmm. with that. Yep. Um, I made a Dave's weekly six pack and I included it in the six pack. I have uh, the Avo XO Legato. That's what we're smoking, right? Yep. The same exact cigar. It's a 54 ring gauge, 6x54. Yes. We put in the uh, Red Anchor Admiral at $25. The Red Anchor is um, Hanky Kellner and the Kellner family putting that brand together um, very much like the Davidoff mm. profile and priced on the way to yep. Davidoff at $25. Yep. Perdomo Champagne Corona. Um, this is eight eighty nine. One of Ed's favorites. I buy it by the box. Buy them by the box. So there are three kind of alike cigars right there. Um, the Drew Estate Black and Corona. Yep. Doesn't belong with this group, right? No, but you know what? A lot of these cigars are <coughs> tied into alcohol. You know, XO, Champagne. Ah, look where you were going. Metallica Blackened. Oh, you know, Dos Ombre. Oh, I get it. So Dan put this together. I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding it. Now I am. All right. Um, help me with this. Dos Ombre Cabinet, Dominican Gordo. Yep. What does that connect with? Without well, Dos Ombre is the name of the oh, tequila company. Yeah. Where's my for, bell? Yeah. Where's, look at, he put a lot right into the Brian cabinet. Cranston and Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad yeah. is the name of their yeah. uh, look liquor at he, company. He put a whole liquor thing together with no liquor. Did you ever get any tequila from them? I never. They promised me a case when yeah. the brand came <laughs> out. did. And I got nothing because I okayed the trademark. Maybe we can get them to show up in person as a as a, a <laughs> substitute. I, I think know. they might have sold it already too. I heard yeah. some one of them did anyway. Uh, well, the next brand on your six yeah. pack, La Mezla Cubana at five ninety nine per stick. I always think the logo for La Mezcla looks like Casamigos, which mm. is the brand that George Clooney sold for uh, Billy. Which is why all the celebrities make their own tequila. Oh, now. yeah. And tequila is <laughs> a and, booming. And we had that before. He had that also. And we had Dolce Hombre before they had yep. that and all this. I thought because La Mezcla Cubana, you were thinking. Also Mezcal. Mezcal. Right? Also right. that. Yeah. <laughs> also that. Yeah. And the Red Anchor is there because of the Red Anchor Lounge. All right, yeah, yeah. so sixty eight seventy five would be that pack, but you can get it on at for fifty nine ninety nine if you go to twoguyscigars dot com. That's the number twoguyscigars dot com in the search bar. Put Dave's and it'll pop down. You'll see it. Nobody knows it's there though, except those that listen to the to the mm-hmm. Ashholes. And there it is, and it'll be there just for the week or till this pack sells out, and then a new mm-hmm. one will appear. So now you know the trick that happens there. Yep. Good. I think it's great. All right. That being said, it is time for the top five, brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Aloha. Today's top five is brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Choose from the mild white label, the medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavor blue label. Series Five Five has it all. Five Five equals the perfect 10, and that's what you get every time. The only thing better than a Five Five cigar is two of them, so you can share with a friend. And now, here's today's top five list. All right, today's top five list, the best-selling alcohols in the United States now. <laughs> Bud this, Light. Yeah, oh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore, you know. This, uh, is, this is alcohols anyway, not, yes. not beer. Yeah, no. Now, Modelo is now number one as a side mm-hmm. uh, thing, but this is the top five spirit sales. And now, this wasn't broken down by bars or this is everything. So, mm-hmm. I'm going to start at number five is Jim Beam. <laughs> 
You know, bourbon. To be expected. Whiskey, I don't really? know, one of the two. I don't, never no, had it. Nothing is going to blow your... It's nothing great. Really? Yeah. Never yeah. had it. Never, Bur- never had it. probably Bur- seen it around. Yeah, it's, yep. it's bourbon. Yeah, yep. not very good either. Number four, which I was surprised it was this low. I figured it would have been higher, even though it was only five, is Captain Morgan. Maybe spiced rum. Be, because there's many Captain Morgans, or you put them all together? No, Captain Morgan is... The original is the, the, is the one that's... Yeah. The, okay. You know, Captain and Coke, that's mm-hmm. the yep. original. Yep. Okay. Number three, Don Julio... Tequila, hmm. which is a nut. That was a surprise. Surprising that. Yeah. yeah. Tequila. Patron. P- P- Patron. Got popular. Patron. Pedro- oh, Patron. my God. It was Patron. I was right. Yeah, yeah. It's some <laughs> cigar show. Yeah. Patron was like eighth, which surprised me hmm. that Don Julio is taking it out. But it's a little bit less expensive depending on which one you get. But number two, this is also a surprise. Yeah, I T- thought that would be number one. I thought it would be number one. Tito's. Yeah. Pretty, Tito's uh, vodka. Yeah. Pretty neutral. Num- you know. And And, and – is that relatively new? Ten years old or something? Within the last twenty. Yeah. 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 I every place I worked that served alcohol, Tico, Tito's was number one alcohol everywhere I worked. So wow. I was surprised to not see it at number one. Put it in anything, you know. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's Let's, it's the perfect mixer, and it's I mean, tastes much like vodka. It's like seven, eight bucks a pour. It's a good one. And then at number one, any guesses what you think it could be? Yeah, it's Jack and Coke. Jack. Well, <laughs> minus yeah. the Coke, it's Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Old number seven. So. Yeah. That's uh, iconic. Yeah, if you look, this is pretty much your list of your well, you know, Jack and Coke, Captain and Coke, Tito's and Soda. And mm-hmm. you said, Ask for it by name. You said uh, <laughs> the best selling beer now is what? Modelo. Never had it. Modelo is a Mexican beer. Really? And it's yep. number one in the United States. Number one. Mm-hmm. And were they number two before Bud Light? I don't know what was number two before. I mean, I think anyone you would think would, Miller, Miller, Coors. Coors. Yeah. But if you look at the mar- different water brands, basically. if you look at the marketing <laughs> spend Modelo has done in the last mm. ten years, they're on every sports channel, every UFC, really? mm. every. Is yeah. it a light beer? Uh, it's 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 lighter. It's stronger. It's actually I think heavier than Corona. It's yeah, got more it, flavor. It just surprises me. It's not like Bud Light drinkers move yeah. to Modelo. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different true. thing. Yeah, it's like between. Budweiser and Bud Light in terms of how heavy it is. What a crazy thing, for Budweiser. Good for them, though. I mean, for Modelo to spend all that money. Right, to, well, they saw the opportunity Bud, and they hit it, right? Bud Light, they'll wow. be talking about that for years in it'll marketing class. It'll yes. be a marketing yeah. books for life. It will be. <laughs> be like and that Spencer. would be delightful. Are you tired of the news claiming the end of the world? Everyone run for cover! Mayday! Are you sick of turning on your radio and hearing things like this? Code Red, duck and cover! You're all in danger! Well, I think it's time for some delightful news. Brought to you by Cuban Delight Cigars. How delightful. Uh, Chrissy, today's story comes out of Australia. (gasps) No way, someone didn't get killed by a crocodile. Um, Or a snake. Apparently, an Australian sailor was lost at sea for three months. Three months lost at sea. Yeah. yeah, and they found his dead body, and and all was well. well. I mean, no, in line with the delightful news. Person? I mean, I guess if his, his family inherited money after he died, that would be delightful. All right, but <laughs> no, he returned after months lost at sea with his dog, oh. and his dog lived too. Yeah, didn't need the dog. Uh, they went fishing every day. What an Australian sailor who said he survived on raw fish and rainwater while adrift at sea for months with his dog, wow. has revealed what his first meal will be after returning to shore. <laughs> if he says fish, <laughs> so right. send him back. <laughs> he wants cooked fish. Yeah. Tim- for sushi. Timothy Shattuck, fifty-four, disembarked from the Mexico tuna boat Maria Delia that rescued him and his pup, Bella, in the Pacific Ocean. Wow. When reporters asked what he would like to eat, Shattuck, smiling through his long beard and emaciated appearance, (laughs) said, tuna sushi. (laughs) No (laughs) way. Uh, Which is what he was eating every day. A a sign of the castaway's sense of humor after having survived (laughs) for months on his disabled catamaran by fishing and eating his raw catch. Wow. Uh, he was just hiding. He's he's hiding from his wife. He wasn't really lost at sea. He's got a second family his, somewhere. He just dog. wanted to cover up. Well, <laughs> There's no way. Sh- <laughs> Shattuck and Bella had set sail from northwest Mexico in late April, planning to sail to French Polynesia. A few weeks into his voyage, a storm struck, disabling his catamaran and leaving him with no electronics and no way to cook. Wow. Whoops. Wow. Yeah, he said he would try and find happiness inside himself 
<laughs> and he found a lot of that <laughs> alone it's at too sea. E- it's too easy. To yeah. he, he declined to discuss the storm or how his v- vessel was damaged. Yeah, super Sounds suspect. suspicious. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he said he spent most of his time adrift at sea fixing things on the boat. Except the electronics. Not very well. Yeah. There. yeah. yeah. I don't know. Th- this Enough is the part. Too, Did the wife months. collect That's the insurance? I don't. They don't mention he, that. This he needs is, an alibi. That's what it sounds like. It's just, I don't know. Something sounds not right with that. Well, this is the strange part. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shattuck said his companion, Bella, that's the dog, yeah. was a lot braver than he was during the ordeal. He said he met the dog in Mexico, and even though he tried to find her a home on land, she kept following him back to sea. Boy, did that dog make a mistake. Mm. Well, the dog ended up better off, I think. He decided to leave Bella in the care of Gennario Rosales, a fisherman from Mazatlan, on (laughs) on the crew of the boat that rescued him. Oh, wow. Left the boat after all that. Yeah. Spent... Three months of winning alone. Apparently, they didn't bond in that <laughs> Not time. much of a conversation last time. Well, I, he, he could have ate him also. <laughs> this guy That's sounds true. awful. I'm glad that the dog left. a small dog. He probably didn't want raw dog flesh. No. You know? no. If there was a way to cook him, that oh, dog was that dead. Oh, that dog was gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he planned to return to Australia <laughs> to spend time with family and friends, acknowledging that he enjoyed the solitude of the sea. He enjoyed it. They pick him up. You're rescued. I enjoyed it. (laughs) Still, he said. Sushi. I I would like sushi, and I enjoyed it. He's going to be the sole suspect in a murder somewhere. And they're going to be like, oh, well, he was lost at sea. He said it might be a while before he returns to the open (laughs) sea. I would think so. That's just delightful. I don't know how delightful that is. He didn't die. This guy seems like a shady character. Something's up. Yeah. I don't know. I think it was delightful that he lived. The dog lived. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the dog found a better home. Yes, obviously. clearly. <laughs> All right. And he didn't have any drinks in any cigar bar or anything while he was there. He had rainwater. Did he bring his own yeah. cigars to the... Uh, I don't know, but... No mention of cigars, but he probably couldn't have lit them anyway. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he got enough rainwater to survive three months, it's just... You're not buying baloney. any of this? It seems, I mean... Yeah, spend time fixing draining, the boat. You start collecting yeah, the best you can, right? Yeah. 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 Fixing the boat, everything but the thing he needs to be fixed. <laughs> right. Yeah. On purpose. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're smoking the Avo XO, and it's part of the Dave six-pack. It's in there if you want to give it a try. It's a good cigar. This is up my alley. This is uh, the type of cigar I like. I will give it a 90. Okay. Mm. 90. 90. Uh, I will actually one up you. I gave it well, a ninety-one. There yeah, we it's go. Just, it's I won- a solid cigar. Yeah. I wound up Aaron and gave it a ninety-two. But again, this is my wheelhouse, just like All right. you did. You got a ninety-three, Ed Sullivan. Going to bring us down back to earth. This right? is two mile for you. Yeah, I. <clears throat> but I still gave it a ninety good. because oh. it's, it's got perfect construction. The burn on it's great, and I like the flavor. It just doesn't have enough strength for my yeah. taste. Yeah, good cigar. Good yeah. cigar. Good. Nice burn. Everything's good about it. I like it. I was hoping he was going to show up here uh, a little early, but uh, the guys from Pit Life Bob are oh, yeah. on here because uh, I, I have a little something for him. But uh, they'll talk about it on well, the show, and you guys can stay tuned for yeah, that. Stay tuned. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. Is there any way to stay tuned? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I would have to run a commercial break like right now, and then they you disappear, and then they come on. But and they could, like, you, camera magic. They could be on. And we could keep uh, watching the same feed that we've got on now. The United Podcast Network. Yes. Dot. Com? Oh, United. Facebook. United, we just, yeah, not, yeah. United Podcast Network Facebook page. I mean, you can find us online. No, but we have the web does, website. Does yeah. it stream on the website? Yeah. United. No, Australia. not to no. it. It shows you how often I go on the website. Yeah, right. I'm assuming .com. Yeah, I, I think so. UPN.com? United Podcast Network.com, where all the shows are. Mm-hmm. But So you're watching us, and then you hit refresh, and then they show up. No? No. 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 On the front thing, no? Mm. Okay. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do a crossover? And if I mean, You have to put your he, password in, and then it'll... To do on unitedpodcastnetwork.tv. You are dot TV. Dot TV. TV. He looks at me like I built it. This yeah. is years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Here he is. Here he is. John so, <laughs> uh, 
yeah, we're doing a crossover right now. And <laughs> I, I, it's not I, a cross. They're all going to stay tuned for you. To stay in tune. He's but, trying to figure out how to like stay on the air and just but, row your but show you right can, after. You can step forward right here just so the, mm. the gang can see you. Get on camera. And Chrissy has something to hand you. Yep, we've had you on before. And uh, yeah. this is in celebration you. of your 250th Whoa. show. Yeah. 250 shows it's from Pit Life Barbecue. It's your first award, Pit Life Barbecue. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty episodes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there. look at that! Isn't that Whoa. nice? Congratulations to you. That That's is a huge, monumental. You are in the two percenters. Oh, easily. Yeah. Two percent. It's a hell of a feat to get that many podcasts. Two percenters so. of two hundred and fifty episodes. Okay. Johnny from Pit Life Barbecue. Congratulations yeah. to you. Thank you. All right, and that is it for the show. I was hoping he showed up, and he did in the nick of time. Next week on the show, the hottest cigars of the summer. We are deep into the summer. It will be August. Will it be August by then? It will be. Almost, almost. Or it will be. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it will. Yeah, okay. I think it will. So we're going to be in the the heat of August, and we're going to tell you what the hottest cigars of the summer of 2023 are. Until then, you've been listening to The Ash Holes, broadcasting live from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studios above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. Stick around. Pit Life Barbecue <laughs> is next. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners.